Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Block Breaking SMP. In this episode, I'm going to move some pillagers, I'm going to spawn some bats, and I'm going to run some stats. So let's get right into the episode. Not too long ago, Red came by and gave my castle a heartbeat. So I think for this episode, I want to spend some time bringing some life to this castle to go along with that heartbeat. And one way I can bring some life into this castle is to bring old Oscar in, and uh, he's made a couple of her friends recently. <laughs> These guys have just been randomly getting caught in Oscar's boat, so he now has a few friends. Uh, so we've got uh, George, and we've got Frank, and of course, our original Oscar. So I want to get these guys into the castle, get them walking around and having some fun up there. Um, I was originally just going to bring them into the ground floor, but we have a problem with that. See, every one of my doors leading to the outside has a trap door. I'm sorry, a uh, pressure plate on it. And I think that will make it easy for this, these guys to walk out of the castle and then perhaps get lost and not be able to find their way back in. So... To counter that, I wanted to get them all the way up onto the roof. And if I get them up onto the roof, then at least uh, it'll be a long time before they make their way down to one of the um, one of the exit doors. <laughs> so um, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do this, but I think I'm pretty sure boats are affected by. Um, bubble columns that are made with soul sand and um, I think they are at least so I think I'm gonna build essentially like a 4x4 four four bubble column all the way up to the roof that I could just boat these guys into and get them up there <laughs> so let's see if this works and I'm thinking if I just bring them up this wall here I think they'll have enough room to uh, float down in here no problem so I think that is going to be my plan. So I have to do a couple of things. Uh, let's see. This thing sticks out a block, so I'm going to have to essentially make... I'm going to have to make walls. <laughs> so if this is going to be 4x4, four four, I'm going to need something like that. I don't know if they get caught in like a 1x2. If that be enough to catch them, or if it has to be 4x4. Four four. But I'm also going to need something to keep the water in. Okay, so I essentially need to build this to the top of my castle. Okay, let's see if these guys can get up there. Who's this first? I believe this is Frank. Alright, please let this work. Please don't drown. Please don't fall off. Oh, look at the... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh oh Okay, not sure what happened there. My boat got stuck. And... <laughs> what? Dude! Dude! Are they just going to commit suicide from up here? They seriously... They're... Their AI lets them fall like that? Look at the boat. I got it stuck in one of the... Oh, in one of the stairs or whatever. <laughs> well, that was a complete failure. Oh my god, is that boat stuck there forever now? Oh no. Okay, let's see. Can I break it? <laughs> All right, well... That was all that was left of Frank. Let's see if we can get George up here. All right, George. I need you to get up there and then not just immediately jump to your death. All right, and I need to stop pressing forward on the boat so it doesn't get caught in those uh, gaps there. Gaps formed by the walls and the stairs. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, what am I stuck on? What am I stuck on? Where's George? Where'd George go?
Uh, where's George? George is still down there. What's going on? What is going on with this boat? Okay, I don't know why George stayed. Oh, I thought this was going to be easy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little frustrated too, George. Or, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're George. Frank is the one we lost. Alright, let's try this again, buddy. And see if we can uh, get up there all the way and not get stuck. Alright, you're in the boat. Maybe if I do this with my view like this, I'll this will work a little better. All right, this is working. Uh oh. What happened? See, as soon as we got to the top. Oh no. I don't think he made it. I don't see his banner though. Okay, it, it ejected him from the boat as soon as we got to the top. Oh, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, maybe if I do this, and I need more water. I don't know what happened to George. <laughs> so maybe if once we get up here, we kind of like use this to like. <gasps> it's not where I want to put it. I want to put it there. Yeah. To like push us this way. All right, let's try this. Oh no, I only have Oscar left. Oh, yep, there's George's banner. Oh no. Do I risk Oscar? Alright, buddy. You ready for this? I mean, come on, you've been my friend for a while here. I don't... Oh gosh, I don't know. See, I don't know why it, like, ejected him out of the boat. You know what? Maybe I'm going to have to do it a little bit safer way with you. Um, I think I might just have to do it the really slow way with you. Yeah, or I'm not too happy about it either, buddy. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work, man. I think uh, I think I gotta take you up the slow, tedious but safe way. Okay. Looks like a clear shot. <clears throat> But now I'm afraid you'll walk off the edge like the first guy did, like Frank did. Man, well, if you do, then you know what? That's your own fault, man. I can't stop you from jumping to your own death. This is going to be so slow. Uh-oh. No, no, no. No, no, no. No. Oh, 
Uh oh. How'd that get up there? How the heck did that get up there? Alright, we got past the first first one. All right, Oscar, now you're up here. Let's see if you can uh, live in my castle without jumping to your death like, like Frank did. <laughs> Enjoy your stay, and I, uh, I hope you uh, I hope you live. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can find Oscar up here. Where'd you go, buddy? Okay, you're not in here. Uh-oh. Well, he's maybe he's already gone down to the level three. Maybe he's gone inside. I hope he hasn't walked off the edge. Oh, I, oh, I just heard him. Ah, oh, there you are. All right, you have not walked off to your death yet. Awesome. Well, it looks like you're ready to uh, shoot some bad guys for me, so that's pretty cool. Well, now that I've got Oscar living up here, I kind of wish I had his two buddies with him. We'll just... Have a moment of silence for Frank and George. Okay, so now the other thing that I wanted to do to bring life into my castle, and this is going to be a hard thing to do. Uh, not that bringing up the uh, not that bringing up the pillagers was easy. <laughs> so I had this idea a while back with this uh, this roof of this top spire here. And I was originally thinking it would be neat to make a big bell in here and fill it full of bats. So you could have, like, the bats in the belfry. <laughs> oh, boy. So the bell thing didn't really thrill me because that would just end up looking like a big blob in the center of, of the space here, which is kind of silly. But then uh, if you watch Mike Croquefone's video when he was visiting my castle to build his build the bedroom downstairs... Um, he came up here and he mentioned that he would like to make some kind of a magic enchanting room up here. And, uh, and I thought that was a pretty excellent idea. So I went ahead and, uh, threw a block up here and put his name on it and told him that he's welcome to come by and make that. Yeah. And I still want to fill this thing full of bats. And cause I think even if it wasn't a, a belfry, even if it was just a room full of, you know, magic and potions and stuff, a bunch of bats flying around, I think would give it a pretty neat atmosphere. So I learned a lot of things about bats recently, looking into this. <laughs> Way more than I wish I ever knew about bats. The um, thing with bats is you pretty much cannot transport them at all. Um, you cannot attach a lead to them. You can't capture them in a boat. You can't capture them in a mine cart. And even if you try to use like water to push them, they just fly up and down against the water flow. So they are really, really difficult to move. So that that really hampers <clears throat> my ability to get them in here. I was really honestly thinking I could put them on a lead and just bring them up here. So my initial idea was go down in a cave, find a bat, hook up a lead to them, carry them up here, and it would be all good. And I would just have to do that many times. But since they're so hard to move around or since they're pretty much impossible to move around, I had to figure out a way to get them to spawn in there. Next thing I learned about bats is that they do not spawn above level, I think, 62. And I think technically you even have to go one below that because they need two spaces to spawn or whatever. So I cannot do anything to get them to spawn up in my tower because it's just too high up. I have to go underground to level, you know, probably level 60, make sure I have enough space. And I'm going to have to make a bat spawner. Yes, I have to make a bat spawner. 
<laughs> and would you believe it? They actually exist. So I found a pretty cool design online by a guy. I'm going to mispronounce his name. I'm going to call him Deuce. Um, and I will definitely put the uh, link to his to his bat spawner in the video description here because I'm going to use that. But essentially what I need to do is I need to build a bat spawner below ground about level 60, but then get them up here into my tower. So the spawning I can take care of with this design, but the moving of them is still going to be a problem. So like I said, you can't move bats around. They're just going to fly around and do whatever they want. But they do follow one simple rule. And this is something that I heard a few places and I, I believe it is that they tend to prefer to fly to the east. So like if I were to spawn a bat right here, like, I mean, I can't, but if I were to, odds are over time, he would end up going that direction. You know, he'd fly around. He might go that way, that way, north, south, east, west, up, down, everything. But eventually he's going to end up moving, migrating towards the east. Now, that might be a whole load of hooey, who knows, but I've heard it from multiple places, so I will take that as fact, because I read it on the internet. <laughs> um, so I also did another experiment in Creative World, and I wanted to see if a bubble column would move a bat. And it did, and it didn't. So I just told you about flowing water. If you have water flowing... The bat will swim up and down that water stream and it doesn't care. The water stream is not pushing it. It's still going to fly wherever it wants to. Now with the bubble column, the bat will still try to fly up and down the bubble column, but when he tries to fly down, he'll move very, very slow. And when he tries to fly up, he'll move very, very fast. So the bubble column will effectively move them vertically over, you know, given enough time. So here's my thoughts. I'm going to position the spawner below ground to the west of my tower, which would be on this side of it. And then from that spawner, I'm going to have a couple of spaces moving to the east for the bats to fly to then get caught in the bubble column going up. And then that should hopefully get them moving up at a relatively decent pace. And then I'll have a few more uh, blocks moving to the east to get them into the tower and I'm just going to poke a hole in the roof up there and that should get bats in my tower should <laughs> so we'll see if this works or not so here I am uh, behind the curtain in my uh, creative world and this is where I was testing out some stuff with the bats so in this case, this would be the, the space where the bats, where I would put be, uh, after the bats have spawned, I would try to move them into a square, and I'm going to represent that. Here we go. I'm going to spawn a couple of bats in here, and what you're going to see is they're going to relatively quickly fly to the east. See, two of them are still flying around. Then they get in the bubble column, and you see how it's not pushing them up, but when they fly up, they go up quickly, and if they try to fly down, they move very, very slowly. See that guy, when he tries to fly down, he doesn't move much at all. But eventually, they work their way to the top to where they're then free floating again, but then hopefully preferring to fly to the east. And I apologize if you heard that loud car outside. And then eventually get into what will be the tower. So you can see here, none of them are left down here. Most of them are up out of the bubble column already. And, uh, yeah. So, so that's the idea with moving them around. So I think that was about the most effective way I could figure out how to transport them from below up into my tower. So the idea behind the... Um, this is the idea behind the, the spawner. So you're basically going to go down below ground to about level 60 and you're going to make a tube of furnaces or any other block that is spawnable but that slime won't stick to. 
And th this will have a top, but it, it's open now, so I could see what was going on. But it will be a solid tube that gives a two by two tunnel inside these furnaces. And this tunnel is going to have to be long enough that it gives, it's going to give space for things to spawn in it. Right. And if, if your openings on the side are just glass and there's lights, then there's light getting in Well, bats can only spawn at light level three and below. And so you want to make sure that, you know, you're not sending full light in here and wiping out half of your tunnel. So you want to get as little light in here as possible so that you can get as many spawning spaces as you can. And of course, other mobs will spawn in here besides just bats. But what the idea here is, you have this two by two flying machine, which will push the bats. Well, actually it'll push all of the mobs that have spawned inside the tube over to the one side. And you're going to have like a, you're going to leave a space open here for everything that's not a bat to fall down. And some of the bats or most of the bats will kind of pop out the top. Some of them might squish and die. Some of them might fall down, but some of them will pop out the top here. <laughs> and then once they're at the top, you can do whatever you want with them, which in my case is going to be move them around, get some name tags on them, and then get them up into my tower. So it's going to be semi-manual. I mean, well, it's pretty much manual. Um, I'll just kind of walk around. If I hear bats squeaking around inside, then I know that some have, have spawned. And I'm going to hit this trap door right here, which will trigger that observer, which will get the machine flying over. And that will push all the mobs over. And again, everything that wasn't a bat should fall down to where we could... Uh, Take care of them that way and all the bats should have come up here so now the bats will be stuck in this two by two space now i want to get them into this one by one space well they're actually technically it's one block two blocks three blocks they're in like a three block l so if i then push a piece of glass over that should push them into where they're now just in these two spaces here and from here I can put name tags on them so they won't despawn. And I'm, it'll be interesting to see how well I can target them to do that because they're going to be flying around. And then once they're all tagged, I can slide this piece of glass out of the way by hitting this. And then they can start traveling to the east like I demonstrated over there. And then hopefully that should get them up and into the tower. So. <laughs> and then once I'm all done and the bats... Once the once the bats are out of this system, I can oops, I can close that back up here. I can open that back up here, and then if I hit this trap door, that will send the machine back to the other side. Now, granted, it might push a few mobs that's maybe spawned in the in the meantime down into here, and I'm thinking I'm just going to let them just fall down and die. And then the machine will just sit here and wait for more bats to spawn. And then once I hear more bats, I'll do it again. So that is the idea. So now let's see if I can actually build this thing. <laughs>
Okay, so my build is complete. I have a, uh, the, the tube here for spawning is 32 blocks long. And, um, and I know it's a little bit dark up here. Well, here, I'm just going to put a torch here for now so you can see. Um, but I'm using the tinted glass to keep as much light out of the system as possible. And uh, that worked pretty well for most of it, except for the fact that I need a trap door here to trigger that observer and light will still get in. So I need to make sure that the light level at this trap door is, is really low. Yeah, so on this end, this end is where I'm going to try to catch to capture the bats and then kind of scoot them over here into the into the water elevator. And the other end is just um, it's just an end to uh, get rid of mobs. So this end has nothing except a trap door to trigger the observer and and a pit to kill mobs. And as far as to to dispose of the mobs that fall, I used magma blocks because magma blocks only give out a light level of like three, I think. So I figured that was a good way to kill off the excess mobs without having to worry about providing too much more light into the system. Okay, so let's go take a look and see what the outside part of the build looks like. Okay, so the outside part of this build is just a glass tube with a water elevator going all the way up to the roof where I want to bring the bats into my tower. And I put um, a good portion of the bottom of this as the tinted glass just to make sure that no light is going to leak in at this level. And uh, with this column of water, if the light gets in at that level, by the time it gets down here, the, the light level is pretty much zero at this point. So, so that will keep all the light out of the system. And that tube just goes into the side of the roof. Uh, right now, there's only one other player on the server, and uh, he is uh, he's AFK, but he might be in the overworld. I'm not sure which will cut down on spawns, which is a bit of a bummer. But, you know, that's the life of having a mob spawner on a server. <laughs> uh, let's see. So you can see here, here's where I switched to regular glass, mainly because I ran out of the tinted glass, but I was high enough. And here you're going to see where the water elevator ends and then it's just going to go straight into the roof and then once the bats get in there they can fly around. So this scaffolding goes up 128 blocks because anything outside of your 128 blocks is going to despawn. Nothing can spawn outside of 128 blocks away. Anything that was spawned that far away should despawn. Okay, so here I am up at the top, and it's it's, it's a little nerve-wracking being this high on this little one-by-one, one, but uh, luckily I have my elytra. Um, yeah, like I said, I think that mountain, I think I got all of the interior caves in that lit up, so hopefully right now there should be no mobs in my area. And once I start going down a little bit, that bat spawning tube should start coming into range, and I'm just going to kind of scoot down a little bit and then wait. I'm kind of, I want to give the uh, game time enough to actually spawn some mobs in there before I start exposing it to some of the deeper caves. All right, now well, let's see if I got anything. I'm not hearing any mobs now. Oh, I hear skeletons. All right, so something has spawned in there. So I'm going to turn on hitboxes because with it being so dark, it's easier to see the mobs that are coming out. So I'm going to send the flying machine down the tube. And that should push any mobs that have spawned in here. Okay, look, we got... Well, I guess that's a skeleton. Yep. Well, looks like he's the only one I got. And he's armored, so he's going to take a while to die. We're going to have to listen to him. Yep, that's the only one I got. So now I'm just going to send this back on its way. And I'm just going to do it again and see if I can get a bat. Wish me luck. Okay, so this is my second attempt. Let's see what spawned in here. I'm not hearing any sounds. I heard a skeleton. Okay. I feel like I just heard a bat squeak. Oh my god. I hope hopefully there's a bat in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
There's a bat. Look, there's a bat. Let's hope he goes up. Yes. 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 <laughs> it worked. I got one bat. <laughs> here, let me let me put some light up here so you can see him. There he is. There is my first bat. Oh boy. Awesome. Okay, well, let's see. Let's give him a name. And I think Bruce is an appropriate name for him. So let's tag him. There's Bruce, my first bat. Okay, so let's first get Bruce. Make sure that he's only stuck in this one little part here. And now we're going to open up this and see if he will fly up. Now, one thing I didn't consider. Okay. Well, let's just go up top and see if we can uh, see him when he comes up. Eventually, he should fly into this bubble column. All right, Bruce. You can do it. I have faith in you. Now, one thing I didn't consider, in my test world, my, bu my bubble column was relatively short, and this one is relatively high. So I do not know if, if the bats will drown. <laughs> I haven't seen a bat drown yet, so I don't know if they will, but I uh, guess we'll find out. Okay. Well, again, they, they like to fly east, so I imagine he would have gotten into the bubble column by now, but he hasn't, but that's okay. We'll just give him time. Oh, it's nighttime. Here, let me go sleep. There he is. Look, he made it into the bubble column. Yeah, see how when he flies down, he goes really slow, but when he flies up, he just kind of shoots up real quick. And again, that is at least the effect of the bubble column affecting his flight, which will make his average higher and higher up the tube. So, come on, Bruce, you can do this. Come on, little buddy. And hopefully, again, hopefully they won't drown. I haven't tested out bat drowning, but I'm really hoping if it's possible that he'll drown, I might have to, like, make a tube and then make, like, a one over and then another tube, you know, kind of break it up and give them some space to breathe. But we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, he's, he's working his way up. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I don't know why I'm so excited about capturing a bat. The most useless mob in the game. <laughs> uh, just makes me giddy. Okay. There he goes. He's getting towards the top of it. Okay. And I'm keeping those hitboxes on so he's a little easier for us to see. Oh, there he is. Okay, so he made it to the top without drowning. So now he just has to work his way to the east and get into that tower. It's almost there. Yes, he might fly back and forth for a bit before he gets in there. But once he gets in there, there he is. Now, he could always fly back into the tube, but there's so many more spaces up in that roof to fly around in that the odds of him coming back through the tube are pretty small. But even if he does, he'll just fly back in eventually. So let's go see Bruce in his new home. There he is. Look, he's taking a little nap. There's Bruce. There he is. Hey, buddy. This is your new home. And hopefully you're going to have lots of friends. So I made enough name tags for uh, 16 bats here. Now, I did leave a sign up here, do not leave door open, because if somebody comes up and leaves this open, the bats might pathfind out of this room, which would kind of stink. All right. Well, I'm going to go do this uh, 16 more times. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be here all day. So I'll see you. I'll see you when it's done. And we'll go Wayne, Bruce, and Wayne. Bruce, Wayne.
Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Batman. And Dracula. <laughs> well, after uh, more hours than I care to admit, I finally got 18 bats up here in my roof. <laughs> I think they are awesome. They're so cute. Just hanging on the ceiling the way they are. Some of them snuggling up like these two right up there to my left. Uh, these guys are adorable. Um, I'm really glad I did this, but I don't think I ever want to do that again. <laughs> so I was visited earlier today by two agents from the Gaming Commission of the Land of Block Brachia, and uh, they had some concerns about my game. So I have a recording of that interaction, so let me just roll that clip right now. Ah, here I am, just relaxing and enjoying a nice afternoon sitting by my fireplace in my beautiful new study that was designed and built by Blockbreaker Pom Pom Dexter. Huh? Oh, what was that? Is there someone in my front door? Uh, let me go check and see who that is. Well, hello there, gentlemen. I see my butler has already let you in. Uh, what can I do for you today? Yeah, sir, we're here from the Block Breakia Gaming Commission, and we would like to talk to you about a game you recently installed in the gaming district. Oh, sure, yeah, my, my Gollum Gamble game. Ah, I bet you're a big fan of it, aren't you? Okay, well, why don't you come up into my office so we can be a little bit more comfortable instead of standing here in the, in the uh, atrium. So yes, here we are at my study, this room recently designed and installed by Blockbreaker Patat Potter. Please, come on in, have a seat. Okay, sir, uh, Mr. Uh, what can I call you? Uh, you can just refer to me as Sir, Mr. Oda. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, sir, uh, what is it that I can help you with regarding my, uh, my Gollum Gamble game? Well, sir, we have reviewed the video evidence of the plays of your game, and we have concluded that the game might not be legitimate. You see, games of chance installed on our server must truly be games of chance, and your game appears to be skewed towards the yellow side. We have reviewed the tapes, and it seems like the yellow team wins quite often on your game. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a weird anomaly. I, I noticed that myself, but I swear the game is legitimate. Well, sir, you're just going to have to prove that to us, or we're going to have to shut you down. Okay, okay, I understand, I understand. That, that makes total sense. Well, I'll tell you what, give me some time, and I will collect some data, and I will get back to you, okay? Yes, sir, that would be sufficient. You have one day. Thank you. Yeah, so I actually do share some of the concerns that the, uh, that the gentleman had, and um, I did also notice that the several, several of our first runs, uh, many of the wins favored yellow. Um, I think blue won a little bit, red won a little bit, and green never even won at all. So I was thinking that some of the possible reasons why one golem could be uh, favored over the others, maybe it could have something to do with uh, the pathfinding within the chunks. Uh, turns out that these are not centered within one chunk. This this board kind of lies along the intersection of four different chunks. So that could play a part. It could also be maybe the surrounding terrain. Uh, maybe there's more or less available uh, spaces for the pathfinding to pick from when the golem decides to move um but it's really hard to tell if any of those reasons are truly legitimate um i think the only way we're going to get to the bottom of this is to uh well take the data from those first several runs which uh, was heavily skewed towards yellow here and uh just run the game a whole bunch of times and and collect more statistics and see if the game truly does favor yellow or if those games were just a uh, statistical anomaly so, let the boring statistics gathering begin! Yeah, I wasn't going to make you sit through several minutes of that, no way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the real statistics took me about two hours to gather, 
and even sped up at that incredibly fast pace that was uh, over a minute and I wasn't going to make you watch all of that. Well, here I am uh, hanging out in this uh, library that was uh, recently designed and built by Blockbreaker Lencrafter. And uh, I have gathered my statistics and I want to share them with you now. So here are the statistics that I gathered from 68 runs of the Gollum Gamble. So you can see my, my very first run, which was my test run, came out with yellow. And then the, the, and the next three games that were run, uh, yellow won two of the three. And uh, I believe AVG uh, made out with a bunch of our diamonds from those wins. <laughs> and then we played the game a few times during game day not too long ago. And uh, in three of those games, yellow won twice. And I believe Tinsir was the one that uh, got, the, uh, got the spoils from those wins. <laughs> so... Um, I went ahead and uh, made this chart where I tracked each time one of the golems won a game. I'd put a little tick mark in their column, and that would add to their total games. And then I would take each one of those totals based on the running total of games and get a percentage of how many, uh, what, what's the percentage wins of those particular golems. And heck, you can even see here that green didn't even get their first win until 13 games in. So the, the fun thing about statistics is that random is clumpy. Uh, random, you almost think that random should be evenly spread, but it really isn't. It is very clumpy. So you can see here where sometimes red will have a winning streak. Uh, sometimes green will get on a winning streak. Yellow gets on a big, long losing streak for a long time in here. So, so these, these clumping of statistics make it appear to us as if there are patterns happening. So if you think about a, uh, a roulette table in a casino, people will see the numbers that have, the recent numbers that have come up and they'll see several reds in a row. And some people will think to themselves, well, that means red is hot. I should bet on red. And then other people will say, well, that means black is due for a win. So I should bet on black. And, uh, and really each, each spin or each game in this case is completely random is completely separated from all the runs that came before it right there and um but like i said they they tend to form what appear to us to be patterns and we tend to translate that into the the game so when i ran the statistics for these 68 games i went ahead and charted what it looked like based on the percentages of wins and you can see that yes in the beginning yellow was highly favored so it's even down into here, he was still winning 50% of the games. But then, you know, yellow kind of went on that, quote, losing streak, right? And then uh, some of these other colors finally caught up. Well, now right around here, all four colors are dancing right on that 25% line. And then, of course, as the games go, some of them dip up and down from that. But they all continue to converge on this 25% line. So if you have a winning streak or a losing streak, you'll dip up or down. But statistically, they all come back to 25%. So currently right now, yellow is on a bit of a losing streak, which is why yellow is below the line. But uh, yeah, see, all the colors are right about 25%. And if we were to run this out 100 games, 200 games, 500 games... Uh, these numbers, these would all probably settle right in at the 25% and they would barely be moving up and down once you consider the total number of games. So based on that statistical analysis, I believe that this should satisfy the Gaming Commission gentlemen and I think any of my viewers or other block breakers who were thinking that the game might actually be skewed towards one, one color or not. I think hopefully that will rest your fears and know that you can safely play the Gollum Gamble and know that it truly will be a random result. All right, well, I think that about wraps up this episode. Um, I'm glad that you uh, took some time out of your day to spend it with me. I really do appreciate that. And another thing I would appreciate if you uh, go down, there's a link in my description to get to all the other Block Breakers channels. If you could go check them out, uh, there's some really entertaining stuff down there that I think you'll like. All right, um, until next episode, you take care of yourself, okay? Bye-bye. I heard a bit of a distressing noise coming from up here, and I hope it's not what I think it is. Uh-oh. Oh, 
no. Yeah. That was Oscar. You will be missed, Oscar.